Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and very good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to our first class of BAA 2213, the reinforced concrete design. Okay, for the first topic, let's take a look on the introduction to RC design, which is the design theory and the materials. Okay, and this is the lesson outcome of this uh, subject, okay, of this uh, topic. For after this class, you must be able to define and explain the reinforced concrete materials, as well as the material properties of concrete and steel, the limit state design, okay, which is divided into two, which is ultimate and serviceability limit state. And you must be able to characteristic the load and the strength, as well as the partial safety factors. Okay, and then uh, the main objective. Okay, let's take a look at the main objective of structural design is we must possess an acceptable margin of safety. Okay, whatever you do, you must look on the safety first. And then it must be able to service, okay, which, which is the service, serviceable and perform its intended purpose whilst in use. And it must be sufficiently strong to cater for subjected loadings and maintainability. It must be able to be maintained and it is economic to construct and economic to, to maintain. And then uh, this is the design objective. Okay, as I mentioned before, safe, fulfill its purpose, strong and economic. Okay, and this is the project procedure. Okay, well, for the if you become an engineer uh, later, so you will go through this uh, procedure. Okay, which is from the project manager or the client. They propose to uh, let's say develop uh, one area with uh, housing, or maybe to develop a uh, new commercial area, uh, commercial uh, commercial building, and then they will go to to the architect. Okay, they will discuss the, the concept, okay, which is known as the planning phase. And then uh, architect will, will uh, further discuss with uh, another consultant in design phase, which is uh, involved the electrical and mechanical engineers, the civil and structural engineers, and the quantity surveyor. And in the construction phase, all the designs will be constructed by the by the contractor. Okay, so this is our our phase. Okay, our 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 role is to uh, conduct a safe and economic design. Okay, so what is a reinforced concrete? Okay, this uh, composite material that combines concrete, okay, which concrete plus steel reinforcement. The combination of these materials provide strong durable building that could cater for both compressive and tensile stress. Okay, so this one is the example of reinforced concrete. So uh, you can see the how the, the steel reinforcement is set up inside the, the concrete. Like this one, okay, this is the, the work of uh, concreting of uh, slab element. Okay, this is the properties of concrete. The advantage of concrete is, of course, it is very, very strong in compressions. However, the concrete is very weak in tension. And this is the properties of concrete and steel. You can see this one, okay, this is the strength in tension. The concrete is very poor, but steel is very, very good and strength in compressions, the concrete is very good and still, still also good, but slender bars will buckle. Slender bars means a bars which is uh, too long and it will be easily uh, buckle if uh, undergo very, very high compressions. And this is the strength in shear and this one is the durability of uh, concrete, which is very, very good and still uh, 
corroded. Okay, will will corrode uh, if unprotected, and a fire resistance. In terms of fire resistance, the concrete is better than than the steel. So we combine this uh, two uh, this I mean these properties of this these two materials. Okay, to complete each other. Okay, they they will complete each other. Okay, this one. Okay, this is uh, the advantages of uh, concrete advantages and disadvantages. Okay, of concrete as the construction materials advantages is uh, ability to be casted. Okay, it will follow the the shape of the of the formwork. Okay, if you want the formwork as uh, square, it will follow. It will become square. If you want the circle, it will become circle. And it's also economic, durable, fire resistant is good, energy efficient, on site fabrications is uh, possible, always possible. And we can uh, uh, form aesthetic properties for, for concrete. Okay, but the, the, but the disadvantages is low in tensile strength, low in ductility, volume instability, low strength to weight ratio. So the this is the typical reinforced concrete elements. We have the beam, slab, column, walls, base, and foundations. Okay, you can read later. And this is an example of a two-story building. You can see you must know you must know the structural elements. Okay, where is the beam? Okay, this beam here is actually this is we call as landing beam. Okay. Landing beam for for to to support to support the forces from this staircase we call it as a landing beam. Okay, so here we have this beam. This is this is one beam. Okay, in your project later you you must be able to determine the position of beam and position of column. Okay, this is the beam. Okay, the, here also you must have a beam. Here also beam at the bottom of your roof. Here also you must provide a beam, okay? And then this is okay, footing. You must have footing or foundations, okay? At the end of your, of your column. This is we call as foundations, either pet footing or pile cap or stri uh, strip footing. And so on. This is column. Okay, the vertical element. Vertical element. This one is column. You must know. Okay, uh, the the load pass. Okay, the the laluan beban. Okay, baca bagaimana kah beban itu di dialirkan daripada structure sampailah kepada kepada foundation sampailah kepada soil. Okay, and this is the staircase slab. Okay, you must have uh, slab. Okay, so like this one. This is a, we call a simply supported beam. A simply supported concrete beam is subjected to vertical UDL. And when subjected to the loading, the beam will deflect like this one. Okay, so the upper part, okay, the upper part will undergo compressions. Okay, the, it will compress here. And but lower part of the beam will experience tension okay okay as i mentioned before uh, concrete is very good in compressions but very very weak in tension okay so the compressive stress is scattered by concrete which is strong in compressions and the tensile the tension is scattered uh, by the steel reinforcement which is strong in tensions so that's why we need the steel reinforcement inside the concrete. Okay, that's why huh? we need the steel reinforcement because the steel reinforcement is very, very good in intention. So it can help the concrete to cater for the for the tensile stress. Okay, like this one. Okay, without without the steel reinforcement, the crack will occur here. And then with the uh, steel reinforcement, it will be become stable. Okay, 
how to determine the number of stereo reinforcement and the size will be uh, teach later. Okay, and then this is the okay function of steel to resist to resist the tensile stress. Okay, and have deformations to enhance the bonding with the the concrete. Okay, this one we call as deformed bus or sometimes it's ribbed bus, and this is the plane rounded bar. Okay, any question up to this one? Any question? Why we need? First of all, you must know. We must understand why we need the steel reinforcement inside the concrete. Of course, because uh, tension. Yes, the to cater for the tension. Okay, because the 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 concrete is very very weak in tension, but it's very very good in compression. So we combine the uh, properties of steel and concrete to uh, create a safer and economic materials for our buildings. Okay. And this is the material properties. Concrete, okay, is a variable material. As the load is applied, the ratio between the stresses and stress is approximately linear. Okay, it's approximately linear at first and the concrete behaves almost as an elastic materials. Where it will go to its original position, uh, original shape when the load is uh, uh, when the load uh, is removed. Okay, the curve becomes no longer linear and behaves as a plastic materials. Okay, when it passes the yield uh, conditions. Okay, like this one. Okay, after just it's passed the yield, it will become plastic. Okay, and this is the Concrete compressive strength. Okay, this is the FCK. Is the concrete strength is assessed by measuring the crushing strength of cubes and cylinders made from the mix. The samples are then cured and tested after twenty eight days. Okay, inside the lab, if you can still can remember uh, your lab one. Okay, you will test usually seven, fourteen, and twenty eight days. Okay, and then we can uh, we monitor the value of 28 days. Okay, the strength of concrete is intended by its class. Okay, let's say this is the class 30 to 37, means that the crushing uh, cylinders, uh, cylinder crushing strength, okay, FCK is 30 Newton per millimeter square after 28 days, and the cube must achieve equal to or more than 37 newton per millimeter square after 28 days okay this is uh, how we uh, how we mark okay the, the 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 concrete mean this is your strength of fck okay fck is the strength obtained when we use the cube uh, sorry uh, the cylinder okay the cylinder for for the test but when we use the cube for the test, the strength must achieve more than or equal to 37 Newton per millimeter square at uh, 28 days. Okay, will you follow me? So you can uh, explore the tech class software or you can find the, in the internet the information. What is the concrete class available? Okay, so if I, let's say this one, C25 stroke 30. Means after 28 days, the cylinder strength must achieve 25 Newton per millimeter square, and the cube strength must achieve 30 Newton per millimeter square. Okay, like this one. Okay, this is the class available. You can find another class if you want to know more. Okay, this is the plain concrete, the usage. Okay, this is the usage, and this is the strength of FCK. So may I know the what is the the strength of FCU here? Okay, for the for the first one, this one, what is the the, the value of FCU, the cube the, the cube sample? Anybody? Twenty. Yes, good. Twenty. How about this one? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. This one. 
Thirty. 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 Thirty here. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Okay. And this one is. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Okay. Usually for. Okay. So concrete in foundation. Okay. This great great thirty. Okay. Great thirty. Great twenty-five. Okay, usually we use you use this one lah. Okay, for the government government project, we use grade thirty. Okay. Okay, the higher okay, they are higher strength of concrete. Okay, this is uh, just examples. Maybe you can five grade forty, grade uh, eighty. Okay, for high rise buildings like KLCC, so they must use a higher uh, strength of uh, compressive. Okay, and this is the concrete uh, characteristic of strength. Okay, it's the strength uh, of concrete specimen casted and tested as per given code of practice and cured for a period of 28 days. Okay, the cons this is the, the strength, the mean strength and the standard deviations. Okay, and this is the specified Okay, specified strength. Let's say this is for for uh, grade thirty, class thirty. So it's thirty strength. Okay, and then this is the the tensile strength. Okay, in RC design, the tensile strength of concrete is normally assumed to be zero. Okay, so that's why we we totally we totally uh, left the tensile strength to be catered by the by the steel reinforcement. Okay, then this is the material of uh, uh, steel. Uh, I mean, material properties of the steel. Either is a uh, hot roll or cold work high yield steel. This is uh, uh, the fabrication. Okay, how to fa uh, fabricate this uh, reinforcement in the factory. And usually the strength FRK is 500 newton per millimeter square. Okay, this is okay, the bars commonly by H for high yield strength. Sometimes, okay, they H is for 500 Newton per millimeter square. Y is, if you use the British code, is 460 Newton per millimeter square. Okay, anybody know what R? What is the strength of R? The, the, the characteristic strength. If the label is R, what is the value? Sorry? 150 or 250. 150. Hmm. <laughs> you, you, you better be careful, okay? You are going to, to undergo your hell island soon. So it's 250, okay? But the, in Eurocode, we never use this type of bar, okay? Eurocode never use this. All must be uh, with this one, okay? Must be a reboot bars. Okay, and this is the... Uh, stress strain curve of the steel as usual okay after the yield point okay it will go and uh, very very uh, ductile okay because it can undergo a very uh, very high uh, displacement okay very very high displacement with uh, very very high uh, forces okay Okay, this is the modulus of electricity can be taken as 200 kilonewton per millimeter square. And okay, the limit state design, okay, the limit state design of engineering structures must ensure that under the worst loading, the structure is safe. Okay, under the worst loading is safe. During normal working conditions, the deformation of the members does not detract from the appearance, durability, or performance of the, of the structure. Okay, this is the limit state. Okay, it is uh, divided by two, which is ultimate limit state and serviceability limit state. Okay, this requires the structure to be able to withstand with an adequate factors of safety against collapse, designs to ensure safety of the occupants and the safety of the structure itself. The possibility of buckling, overturning, and accidental damage has to be taken into account during the ultimate limit state. Okay, this one, okay, uh, is the the worst. Okay, the worst situations uh, we consider in our design. 
Okay, like this one. This is the buckling of fracture, overturning, and accidental damage. Okay, like uh, explosion and so on. Okay, and for the serviceability limit states, okay, this is uh, important. Important to check for the deflection, cracking, and make sure the structure is uh, durable. Okay, this is okay to, to, to make sure that the, the, the structure is able to withstand the deflection from, from the wind actions. Also, uh, it can uh, resist the crack from occur on the structure. Okay, and this is the, the design code we are going to use, as I mentioned in our briefing class last uh, week. This is the basis of structural design, Euro code. Okay, and then you look at one is the action on structures. You must uh, know the value of loading imposed on the floor. And then this is the, the code we refer for for design, the rules of design. We refer to you code two for concrete, okay, for reinforced concrete. Okay, and then we have uh, characteristic loads. Okay, so before we enter this one, I think uh, I better stop the, the sessions.